Thank you for joining us in our uh, studio you. box, okay. Mike. Uh, Mike Batherham is uh, Director for Local Government at WSP, um, and he's joining here, us here at the ACE conference to uh, expand on some of the things he's been talking about in his earlier seminar. Thank you. And, um, Mike, perhaps we can uh, begin by talking about the very positive signs we see from local government and government generally sure. at the moment in terms of spend, and particularly spend on infrastructure. Is that here to stay, do you think, yeah. or have okay. we got some problems? No, it's, no, it's an interesting, interesting question. Uh, obviously, we have got a change of government in 2015, potentially, but the government have uh, published uh, their policy statement, uh, Investing in Britain's Future. Uh, which sets out a clear strategy for increased investment over the period to 2011-12. Um, so there's a commitment there at the moment from government to see investment increase in infrastructure, particularly in the transport uh, infrastructure of the country. So we see increased investment with the highways agency, we see investment going through network rail, and we also see investment, of course, in HS2. So there is a clear commitment there at the moment. The expectation is that that will continue post the next election. Post next election, yeah, we'll continue. Obviously, it depends on the on on on, on who comes into government power, uh, but there is uh, pretty much all party support behind that sort of investment program. So we often see the slowdown just before the general election, yeah. and uh, you feeling that we can uh, feel confident that we won't see too much of that. I, I think I think the interesting thing is it comes down to how investment is taking place uh, on these programs of work and a lot more investment is now uh, being devolved to local authorities and LEPs through their strategic economic plans which means that they're uh, now in more control uh, over those uh, investment programs so it, one would hope that this time around perhaps we'll be less affected but there's always some degree of uncertainty as you get into that uh, period of time, yeah. So as you see that devolvement of spend yeah. to the local um, authorities, yeah. uh, presumably um, uh, you see a downside to that as well. I don't, I don't really see any downside to it, to be honest. I'm very much in favour I mean, of I look after local government services within WSP and we work with local authorities across the country. And as I was talking this morning, you know, one of the things for me is by having devolved funds uh, uh, with local authorities, well, the idea is to ensure that that investment supports growth outside, uh, you know, London and the South East, so in the regions. So by supporting growth in the regions, hopefully we will benefit as an industry, both at the consulting level and at the contractors, in terms but, of other schemes, yeah. And how does that work in a joined up sense? So we're talking about infrastructure nationally here, we're talking about the, needing, uh, the need to, to connect yeah. and the interoperability of the, the different networks? Well, I think, I think the key thing is around local uh, e uh, economic partnerships, the LEPs, have been set up to help to coordinate activities in their locality, and that's working collaboratively with the highways agency, with Network Rail as well. So the local investment taking place under the uh, guidance of the LEPs, uh, with obviously a strong focus on collaboration with national agencies to ensure that the investment that takes place within those LEP areas is actually focused on supporting growth uh, within, within the localities. And there's a lot of work also underway, at, which I mentioned this morning, with respect to HS2. It's an interesting example yes, yeah. of a project which has been driven nationally, but the regions and the localities, you know, Birmingham City, uh, Solihull Council, and the Greater Birmingham Solihull Local Enterprise Partnership are very much uh, pushing forward with their own plans for regeneration uh, uh, around the, the new station facilities um, and there's you know master plan that's already been published by Birmingham City Council around the Curzon Street area which just demonstrates how the local authorities are actually going on the front foot uh, uh, in, in response to that national proposal that's a good example probably yeah and would that be reflected more widely uh, it is. Country. It is a Leeds, Leeds City region the same. I mean, we did some work as a as a company supporting the Leeds and Sheffield City region in how they could respond to the proposals and maximise economic benefits associated with new proposed stations in Leeds and uh, at Meadow Hall uh, in Sheffield. It all leads us to focus on control of spend. Okay. And this sort of drive, this endless drive for lean delivery. Yeah. We see it in the highways and yeah. the need to uh, more for less is, yeah. it, it seems mm. to be back with well, us again. Absolutely, yeah. But does that lead to compromise in, in 
quality or design? Or? I, I think you know, lean delivery for me is around ensuring that you've got design that thinks that, that when you're designing something, whether it's an asset, and then now, of course, we're in a, a, a completely different environment with BIM uh, that facilitates us to think longer term about asset management. Uh, so for me, it's having, that, it's having that thinking up front. Work that we're involved in at the moment, for example, where we're looking at a, a master plan around Coventry Station. Actually, if you look at that uh, now, the next steps of that, going into the next stages of the design of that sort of facility, if you start to think about the long-term maintenance and actually the buildability of the scheme, you can actually ensure that it will be lean, both in terms of its construction and in terms of its maintenance long-term. So I don't see it being compromised. I see it as being part of a process of uh, quality design engineering really. And you mentioned BIM and yeah. we're, we're here talking about infrastructure yeah. largely, yeah. something yeah. that's not typically associated um, with infrastructure. Well it depends what you mean by infrastructure. When we're talking about infrastructure we're talking about transport infrastructure. Transport yes. infrastructure isn't yeah. just roads uh, right. and it does still have a, a, you know, uh, an application in that environment in reducing clashes and clash detection and so on but of course particularly around the property assets that the uh, transport infrastructure is focused on locking. So in the, in the case of master plans around the stations, uh, if you are designing those uh, uh, as you should do, then you will ensure that you'll be considering the maintenance and long-term operation of those buildings. Uh, so in the case of Coventry, for instance, around their station, what will that be in building in? Uh, ensuring that it's uh, that, that it will be uh, efficient in its operation long term. So low. So you're talking about energy lighting, low energy lighting, for instance. You're looking at the drainage systems, making sure that they're efficient and effective, so on and so forth. Uh, in, when you're actually designing it at the outset, it's so an important thing. So yeah. can I take that that yeah. you see BIM as really quite a key part to the strategic development of our infrastructure ongoing. It's, it's a tool that's used to support that strategic uh, uh, imperative that we have in, in the industry, very much so. And a lot of investment across the industry, consulting engineers uh, are investing uh, you know, very uh, uh, strongly in, in the BIM environment at the moment uh, to ensure uh, that uh, it creates that lean environment. Because Already, when you're designing a building or designing a new facility, you're in a platform where you either can then create 3D models very much more quickly, you can interface with transport and pedestrian models, for instance, uh, more readily, so that's going to make it much more efficient and lean in terms of, the, just in terms of the design activities associated with developing new facilities. And that's uh, a side of the actual facilities themselves in terms of their maintenance and long-term operation. Uh, just um, so, just finally, Mike, to go back yeah. to the lean delivery. Yeah, sure. Um, and uh, do we really need to begin to look at introducing a lot more in a way of standards and control to ensure that quality is delivered, or have we got to still look at taking standards out? I, I, and I yeah, I mean, in my view on standards, standards are very important. They give you a good context in which to design. I think we have to be very careful, though, that we don't uh, constrain innovation. We don't constrain new ideas coming forward. Standards are standards, though, you know, they can provide advice and they can provide guidance to how you should design uh, things and making sure you meet minimum. Uh, you know, thresholds and design, but what we shouldn't do is, uh, is, is, is get into the situation where you're constraining the, the creativity and new ideas coming forward uh, in terms of how you might design buildings, design infrastructure for instance, and that has happened in the past. Uh, where we get you know, standardised designs around, you know, for instance, housing estates and so on. We've moved a long way over the last five, ten years in terms of design because uh, of people referring to, let's say, guidance such as Manual for Streets, uh, where uh, there's, uh, there's an encouragement to be a little bit more creative in that design process, is what I would say. Yeah. So, Mike, in conclusion, would I be right in saying the spend is here, it's here hopefully to stay? Well, that's hopefully the case, yeah. And that's good news if we've yeah. got the right technology in use yeah. and we're driving innovation. Absolutely, absolutely. I think, I, think, I think we should have confidence that it is here to stay because there's a recognition now, and I think it is across all parties, that that infrastructure investment does drive growth. And we've witnessed that over the last few years and we're seeing it in cities and localities across the country. You know, Manchester, a huge investment programme there that is actually helping to unlock development 
uh, and regeneration of that city region is just one example, but all across the country we've got examples of where that's happening. So I would hope that it's here to stay. Yeah. Mike, thanks very okay. much. Thank you.